Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about IO in Java or IO streams in Java. So when we say IO it basically means input output and the basic idea is that your program takes an input and gives you an output. So whenever you have to do some IO handling generally the IO handling involves taking input from some external source. It can be the command line, it can be from a file, it can be from another consumer application, it can be from a hard disk. But the basic idea is that whenever you have to do that input output handoff or input output operation, we call that as IO. Generally, whenever you will hear the term IO, we refer to the input output operations with respect to the file system or the hard disks or the external disks basically. Now, when we talk about streams, what is an IO stream? So the basic idea is that you have an input source, you have an output destination. Now the way the, the input source sends the data to the destination is via streams. So basically it converts the data into one and zero and that one and zero travels as a stream. For example, you can see this pretty good image here where you have a data source and you have a program and your program is trying to read the data from this data source which is basically sitting on the file system and this data gets converted into zeros and ones and then this is streamed to the program bit by bit or piece by piece. Similarly, when the program wants to send the data back to the data source, it again goes in the form of stream. So when we talk about stream, we also use the terms as input stream or output stream. So a program uses an input stream to read data from a source. Remember, whenever we are reading, we will call it as input stream. And whenever we are writing something, we will call that as output stream. Remember that because I will be using this for these particular terms again and again in the demo. So that's the basic idea about streams that you convert this into one and zero and input stream means reading something and output stream means writing something. So now that we have built that understanding, let's have a look at what kind of classes support Java provides to do this IO streaming operations. So this is the Java IO hierarchy where you have the object superclass and then you have different types of streams, stream classes. So you have input stream, you have output stream, you have reader and you have writer. So if we talk about this particular section in the input stream, you have a file input stream, in the output stream, you have a file output stream. This is basically showing an inheritance relationship. So you have the input streams for reading something, you have the output stream for writing something, and you have Java provides the classes to write, to read from a file or to write to a file using the file input stream and the file output stream class respectively. There are more classes under it, but only a few are, few of them are shown for simplicity. Similarly, if I go to the right side, I also have a reader class and a writer class which also have an input stream reader and output stream reader. And again, these have multiple other subclasses like file reader, buffer reader, and file writer. So I will also try to showcase the understanding of why we need this and why we need these. I mean, ultimately you have to write a stream, right? So why creating two different types of classes? I will come back to that in a while. With that understanding, let's go into looking at an example and let's build our understanding of how do we work with streams. And this is also the session where I will talk about the file handling operations in detail. So to understand that, I have created two different examples, one for byte stream and one for character stream. So let's take that concept first. Why do you need two different types of streams? And the reason is pretty simple. Whenever you are reading data from some, some data source or writing data to the data source, so the data can either be simple character strings like English characters or the Unicode characters, or it can be some tabular data sitting in a table in a database. It can be an XML file. It can be an HTML file. It can be literally anything. It can be a, a mathematical expression file. It can be an image. You don't know that. So that's the reason Java created two different types of classes that if you want to work on a particular file, which is holding characters, then you can use character stream. And if you are dealing, if you don't know what kind of data the file is going to contain, then just use byte streams. Character streams also internally will be using the byte stream only. 
but it is much more simpler and much more faster to use character streams if you just have character files. Also, it is worth noting that when you're using character stream, the file will be read character by character. And when you are using byte stream, the file will be read byte by byte. So one byte at a time and one character at a time. So let's look at the byte stream example first. I've created a class called byte stream example. It has a public static void bin method. And then I'm using the file input stream and file output stream classes. Basically what I'm trying to do in this example is I'm trying to read a file and write to a file. And like I said, the, uh, when we look at the theory, whenever we are using the input stream uh, term, we are primarily doing a read operation. And whenever we are using the output stream term, we are writing something to the file. So for these kind of operations, Java provides for file handling, Java provides these two classes, which are called file input and file output stream. So I create null references and then I enter a try block and inside the try block, I basically provide a location to read the file from. So I've created a source.txt in the Java tutorials location. And if I show you what this source file is containing, so if I go to this location, Java tutorials, and if I open the source file, it just has a simple text which says, this is a sample text file. Let me delete this dest.txt for now. So I just have a source.txt here, which is containing a sample text. This is a sample text file. So I am reading the source.txt using the file input stream and storing the output into this in stream, which is a byte stream. And I'm also creating another output stream where I will be writing the destination file. So I'm saying this particular location, write the file with the name test.txt. But these are still just containers. I haven't done much here. So you are going to initialize the reading stream and the writing stream. And then you are going to read one byte at a time till the time you reach the end of the file. The way to denote the end of the file or the way Java tells you that it, you have reached the end of the file is when the read operation returns minus one. So you keep reading the file till the read operation returns the value as minus one. Whenever it returns the value as minus one, it means that you have reached the end of the file. So I'm going to read this source.txt byte by byte, one byte at a time till my re uh, till I reach the end of the file. So I call in stream dot read. I store the output of in stream dot read into a variable called content. And at the same time, I also run this condition that till the time this output is not equal to minus one, keep writing right where right to the out stream. So I want to write to this particular stream. So I, I call the write method. And remember, this is a byte stream, but here I the output of in stream dot read was an integer output. So you need to convert this int output to a byte by doing the explicit casting here. So we do the explicit casting here so that the int con content gets converted into a byte type and then out stream dot write writes that byte inside the stream onto this particular file. So that's what is happening here that you load the in stream, you read the file byte by byte and you start writing the uh, output file byte by byte. That's what you do in this while loop. Once you have reached the end of the file, you will be broken out of the while loop because the whole file has been read and whatever was written in that file has been written to the out stream to this particular file location. And then in the finally block, you close both of the streams. Remember, it's very important to close these resources. Otherwise, these resources will be present till the time Java runs a garbage collection. So it's very important to make sure that you close all the resources which you open in terms of file handling. These are costly connections and they take up a lot of memory. So make sure that you close them in the finally block. And that's why if you see, I've, I don't have a catch block here, but I've put the finally block so that I can say I can seamlessly close them. So that is what I'm doing here. And now if I run this, I don't get any output because I'm not printing anything. But if I go to this particular location and see if I have a dest.txt. So yes, our dest.txt has just appeared, which was not there earlier. And if I double click on this, it has the exact same text as I had in my source.txt. So the source.txt and the dest.txt have the same content because I've just written the source.txt to the dest.txt. So this is how you can use byte stream operations to do file handling. 
Now let's have a look at the character stream example. It is doing exactly the same thing. It's just that you have to use different classes. So instead of file input stream and file output stream, we are going to use file reader and file writer. So I create the file reader and file writer references. Let's call it as reader for simplicity. And let's call this as writer. So I initialize file reader and file writer again pointing to the same location. Let me delete the dest.txt again so that we can observe the output. So I create the object for a file writer and file reader and I again do the same thing. I call the read operation. The read operation is going to return an integer value output and I, I'm going to continue reading the file character by character. This time the byte is not read but the actual character of the file is being read. So I'm going to read this file character by character till I reach the end of the file which is denoted by this condition and as the output is int I need to convert this into char so I cast the int output to a char output and then write it to the writer then I close the reader and writer both and that's it. So if I run this now and if I go back here I will see desk.txt and I see the output here exactly as same. So in terms of output there was no difference but since this was a purely character file, the character stream demo is a better use case or the file reader and file editor classes are a better use case. But like I said, there would be cases where you have to read it as bytes because for example, if you're dealing with databases or if you're dealing with another type of files, for example, image files, etc., that will be traveling as bytes. So using a byte stream might be a better example in that case. And that's, that holds true for any other different type of data source as well. So this is all I want to cover in this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to have a look at how we can connect the Java application to a database using JDBC drivers. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.